going back to the women though, if, and it's a very big if, this doesn't play out like we expect. <laughs> and Lauren and Megan not leading the charge, who's coming up behind them? I could stand here and list almost every other woman in the field as being in contention for the top three. But let's start with some, some of the, the, the more obvious ones. There's, there's Viv, Vivian Tafuto, uh, the, the American. She finished fourth at the World Championships in Manchester. She's probably favourite for that third spot, I would say. She's an athlete that consistently just chips away at her time, is getting better and better and better. She's not an, a natural runner. I think she's got a swimming uh, history. Uh, she was a swimmer when she was younger, and in fact, she was at the uh, US Olympic swimming trials in 2016. Uh, she continues to work on her running. We don't probably really know where her ceiling is with her running. So if she can continue to improve at that and continue to chip away at her time in High Rocks, then she's certainly a contender for third spot. And at some point, we, we can see her contending for those top two spots as well. I know we're biased because we're both Brits. <laughs> we're not biased at all. I'm taking it all back. We are massive fans of everyone out on the floor. But we have an incredible contingent of British females running. Top of that list, coming into this in sixth, Beck Mason. She's proved time and time again she's very at home at this level. But there's still a little bit of a gap to go from the top six that she got in Manchester to becoming a top three. Is this the race where she could really push on and develop? 100% it is, 100%. She, she's certainly in contention for, for the top three spot today. Her performance in Manchester was extremely, extremely strong. She finished sixth, and she's another one who we see continuously improving and chipping away at her time. I know she's been working on her running. I know like things like her 5K time seem to have improved considerably over the summer. So um, it will be interesting to see what she does now. I know she's been struggling with her thigh to a certain extent. Uh, this is her first like, individual race of the season. Has had to go at the doubles in, in, in Spain. Um, so yeah, be interesting to see how she does. Tara Jackson there running on as the MCs announce our Elite 15 females to the floor. Alina Vilnau out of Germany changing her coach this year. We'll see how that plays out. And there goes Linda Meyer as well. Both those ladies, Alina slightly newer in her career, Linda quite an experienced athlete coming through obviously Germany where the sport originated. But they both have been in and out of mid-pack. Linda with the odd good results. But hopefully today an opportunity for them to really stake a claim on the sport. There goes Beck Mason and Alandra Greenlee. Vivian Tafudo, the American on home soil. A contender for that third place berth, potentially even rivaling the one, the only, the current world record holder, Megan Jacoby, who comes into this race ranked in second behind the world champion, Lauren Weeks. These are the ladies you need to be keeping your eye on. Megan Jacoby, blonde hair and headband, front and center. One person we've not spoken about is Camila Massa to the right of Jacoby. She was a little bit absent to a certain extent last year at the elite level, but you do not count out Camila. Nothing beats standing on that start line in the High Rocks World Series. And they are off. The Women's Elite 15 Series is underway here in Chicago. And they are starting at pace. Weeks leading the way. And that's 
what we might have expected. Lauren often likes to go out hot. She often likes to try and stretch this field. Um, both myself and Lauren were talking to, to, to Megan last night about uh, you know how she paces this race, what she's gained from experience over the past year of competing in High Rocks. And I think she, she she alluded to the fact that she's she's got confidence in herself now to run her own race. And I don't think she's going to allow Lauren Weeks to, to, to drag her out faster than she wants to at this point. And our athletes are on to their ski ergs. Let's take a little look at who leads. You've got Weeks followed by Overlander. First in off the run. They are all though exceptionally close. Five, separates, five seconds separating the top 10. Weeks, Overlander, Tafuto, Jacoby, Mason, Massa, Jackson, Greenlee, Meyer and Vilnau in that top 10 position. Jacoby, though, in fourth at the moment. Nothing to be worried about, I'm sure, Greg. Well, no, because, you know, the, the, the little time that separate them all, they've essentially all come in as a group. Um, Megan is very good on the ski, as is Lauren. Um, and, and like we talked about before, but it, it, it's, it will be tempting to try and push it, to try and come out ahead of the others. But five seconds faster on the ski can cost you, like, minutes later in the race. I mean, we've mentioned that we sat down uh, with Megs yesterday and actually one of the kind of most pertinent things for me that came out of the chat that we had was that she had a really hard year last year and we would have never have seen that because all we saw was her bossing it on the racetrack. But she's got, you know, an eight-year-old at home that she's constantly leaving to go racing and she has a full-time job and actually the balance of all of that she felt actually really weighed on her mentally. Now, the good news is coming into this 2024 World Championship season is that this is her last week of her quote unquote big girl job, <laughs> which means she can go whole hog into her coaching and her online programming and being a full time athlete and mum, which I think is actually a really special thing to be able to achieve. Which is a similar thing to what we were saying about Ryan Kent earlier. Ryan has now been able to focus on the sport, you know, train like a professional full-time athlete, and he's just dominated the field. Well, not dominated the field, but he's won very con convincingly. And Megan will have a, a, a experience a similar benefit from something like that. Now, if we talk about their ski times, uh, not necessarily ski times within a high rocks, but their 2K ski times, if we look through the field, uh, Megan and Lauren have two of the stronger two kilometer ski times. Uh, around 7.38 for Megan, 7.35 for, uh, for, uh, for Lauren. Uh, so very, very strong on, these, uh, uh, on this station. Look at their technique. There's a real variety. I mean, with the ski erg, it's about getting as great a reach as possible with your hands and then pulling down, whether you're using your legs or your abdomen or in fact your triceps. And every athlete's going to be a little bit different in that regard, pending their strengths and weaknesses of what's coming up. I would be thinking personally about protecting my legs as much as possible, knowing the sleds are underway, especially when this is only the opening a thousand meters of a very long race. <laughs> But as you can see, it was Lauren Weeks and Viola Oberlander who are currently one and two. Hopefully, we'll have some indication of how they're getting on in the ski as Lauren Weeks is done and gone. The 2023 world champion, the first off the ski, But no one is that far behind, including Megan Jacoby, Alina. I think that's Lauren Weeks just coming in for the sled push there. And she's 
maybe that was five seconds ahead of Megan. So not a huge gap opening up at all at this stage. The 50 meter sled push, 152 kilograms, including the sled on there for our women. And well, light work, <laughs> is, that, is that fair to say? But honestly, being up on your tiptoes and pushing the sled, it blows out your posterior chain. Your calves are on fire, your ankles are probably hurting. And your heart rate's going through the roof just because of the sheer exertion. So it's finding a pace you can maintain and a position that works. You can see the girls opting for the shoulder on bar approach. How does that help? The, the technique that you, you see on sled push, I think just differs from person to person depending on you know their, their size, their weight, their height. Um, Different people are going to prefer different techniques. And what you just saw with Lauren there is sometimes it's nice to mix up the techniques. So, you know, there she's using her four, forearms, but on the previous push, she was using her hands on the poles. So it, it just eases off certain muscles slightly using different techniques. But they're both pushing very, very well here, moving it well. They are taking little breaks, you know, they, they, obviously they have to manage their legs, they don't want to ruin the rest of their race, um, but they're consistently pushing, consistently chipping away at that 50 metres. Tafuto in third, Oberlander down to fourth on the sled push. This is such an absolute grind, but Tafuto out of Texas, just on the outskirts of Austin. She hasn't had to travel that far. It's quite a nice little flight over <laughs> um, across the middle of America. But she has had a real focus so far on DECA. In your experience of that competition, like how much does the training translate? The sense I get from the athletes, especially certain ones like Tara Jackson, for example, is that the training's pretty similar to a certain extent until you maybe want to challenge for the top spots yeah i think i think that's just it, it is a different event it is there's certainly less strength requirements in it the running is incredibly important as it is in high rocks but it's a much more intense event so it lasts maybe like half the length of a high rocks. so they're running generally at a faster pace very intense um the the training to answer your question the training i think translates to a certain extent but i think if you like like you said if you really really want to compete then um, i don't think you can train for for one sport and expect to compete at the top in another seven seconds between weeks and jacoby but going back to tofuto this time last year this was her first ever elite 15 given how much we say her name that seems kind of mental because she's really actually asserted herself in high rocks as a sport she was saying that her real focus needed to be her running when i spoke to her in the build-up to this event and she's worked really hard on that in the off season but to the point where in those opening runs she was willing to kind of exert more she had more confidence in her ability to go with the pack yeah and can you imagine the kind of confidence that gives you in general when you know you're up against the likes of weeks and jacoby so your top four remain the same, but Massa, Meyer and Mason are not far behind at all. Rebecca Mason, I mean, she is probably at this stage the biggest talent to come out of the UK, someone that you've had a lot of interaction with over the years. What can you tell us about Beck? Uh, Beck uh, is another, I oh know I, I seem to keep saying this, but consistently chips away at her time, consistently improves. Um, I think she was really pleased with her performance in Manchester yeah, six months ago. I think she went into that race hoping for a top 10, probably secretly hoping for, for, for higher in top 10, but she, she wanted top 10 and she finished sixth. It looked really, really strong. Um, she's worked on her running. I know she's been struggling with injuries, but has still been able to run very well despite the injury. Um, and like, like I say, her 5K running time has improved significantly. Um, so yeah, she, she's, she's a very strong athlete and certainly on the trajectory to, 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 to be in contention for, for some of these top spots. She's uh, recently changed her longtime coach as well, Jade Skillen, now working with Tom Hogan purely for that running focus. As the ladies 
are back to back on the sled pull. Lauren Weeks to the right, Megan Jacoby to the left of your screen. Tafuto and Oberlander, your three and four, but they are building a solid gap of 20 odd seconds. Only two separating your leading two, as tight as we imagined, Greg. This is what we're here for. Yeah, exactly. Following on from the, 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 what close men's race it was, this is shaping up to be the same. So coming into this sled pool station, just two seconds separated Lauren and Megan. Then Vivian was just 20 seconds behind them and the Viola was uh, 59 seconds behind Lauren. So it's very, very close at the top. Uh, a lot of athletes looking very strong. And this will be interesting. The, and Megan will be very encouraged here. Like I said earlier, Lauren's... Well, Lauren's strong throughout the race. There are no weaknesses, let's be clear on that. But the advantage that she has over Megan is generally in the early stages of the race, coming through the sleds. So if Megan can come out in contention with Lauren after these sleds and be feeling relatively good, you know, if she can continue to hold her run at this point after, uh, along with Lauren, then she'll be really encouraged. Meg, though, slightly ahead of Lauren Weeks in that lane number two from the left. But we are talking minimal, but that does mean that for the first time in this race, Kobe is taking a small lead, but can she build on it? I mean, we did say it's very much about running her own race. Is this the time where she really pushes her head or should she settle back into a certain pace? This is it. the interesting point here on the grid. Then, then next week, oh, I think Megan's out there. Megan's out and Lauren, let's see how far Lauren is behind. Maybe one last pull there. So yeah, maybe 10 seconds behind Megan. So Megan's opened up a lead there. They came into that station effectively neck and neck. Megan's opened up a strong lead. So let's see how this running looks. She looks really strong. She is a runner. She's probably the best runner in this field. Uh, and she's looking strong so far. She's coming out of there looking confident. And there's Vivian Tafuto that's come out there in third spot. Maybe 20 seconds behind Lauren. Don't sleep on Vivian Tafuto, that's all I'm saying. Austin's own. But yeah, your top three, Jacoby, Weeks, Tafuto. A little bit of a change out onto this run. This seems to be suiting Megan Jacoby, these nice long runs down the long side of Festival Hall here in Navy Pier, Chicago. I believe we're saying that, that we're kicking off the season in Navy Pier. Like, it's just such an iconic venue to start the majors. And if the community running and racing this morning is anything to go by, you know, the atmosphere out on the floor, now we're back in our booth, must be utterly incredible for the athletes who are running around. And we all know, being Brits and super serious, that the Americans are loud and an absolutely fantastic audience. <laughs> uh, yeah, I must say the the you know I'm, I'm used to the UK events where they're very very popular. You know the atmosphere is amazing, but the atmosphere here today has been very similar. It's a, it's a huge venue that we're in. Uh, thousands of athletes, thousands of spectators. The uh, the atmosphere has been brilliant, and you know the, the crowd are very very excited too about these elite races and the performances that we're seeing. Linda Meyer, not on your screen, but done with her sleds as she takes back to the track. In our booth here, we have a couple of different screens. So what you're seeing is not necessarily what we're seeing as Megan Jacoby is still comfortably out front. And by the looks of it, giving herself a real buffer That looks like a decent amount of space that she's managed to accumulate between herself and Lauren Weeks. That's uh, on that point. That's going to be really interesting to see these runs. Does she open up a bigger gap on Lauren 
on this run because that will give a clear indication as to how they're feeling coming out the sleds. So the gap leaving the sled pool was just nine seconds between them. But Megan is looking really strong, and I don't get the feeling that she's she's uh, that the, the gap is being closed between the two of them on this run. Uh, remains to be seen, obviously. But yeah, that that will be interesting to see what, what's the gap when they come into the uh, to the burpees. Alina will now also joins them on track, coming out of that sled pull. Obviously, Jacoby in weeks your one and two to Futo three. But Viola Oberlander is occupying that fourth spot and Camila Massa in fifth, just holding Rebecca Mason to sixth. Now that is going to be the battle for the potential spots to world championships. Of course, the top three automatic qualifiers, but for the remaining majors of the season, roll downs. Roll downs are possible to auto qualify for the remaining majors and then also even just get in a good time that potentially qualifies them based on time. So they'll be looking to do that. And if this course is, you know, shaping up to be a quick one, as you know, some of the men would seem to indicate it is, then they'd, they'd, even if they feel they're not in contention for the top three or the top five, they still want to be putting in a good time uh, to, to potentially qualify them for future majors. Now, in that battle for top three, leaving the sled pool Vivian and Viola were in third and fourth they are reasonably strong athletes they, 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 they're comfortable on the sleds behind them people like Camila Rebecca Mason Lynn Meyer Terry Jackson they've got they're very strong in the latter half of the race as well so they, they'll be confident that they can close the gap on them too as, as the race progresses yeah it's almost the perfect place for them to be as Megan Jacoby is First onto the burpee broad jumps. No sign of fatigue or stopping for the American. There is now a 22 second gap between Megan and Lauren. I mean that, we've seen bigger gaps come down, let's be honest, but that's promising. For Megan, that's very promising. Yes, yeah, so she opened up um, 13 seconds, uh, no, 12, 13 seconds on that last run alone, um, which is a significant difference for these two ladies. You know, not much separates them on on the running generally. So nine second difference on one run is quite significant. Um, so Megan will be very, very encouraged by that, and she's looking strong on these burpees. These burpees, like we said earlier, jack your heart rate up. It can start to feel really compromised, really struggling, but she's just chipping away at them, keeping moving, um, you know, not showing, not showing signs of fatigue at this stage. If you are a slightly new viewer to the sport of high rocks, you'll notice that the athlete's hands have to be within one foot of their landing spot of their two feet, and they have been instructed in their athletes briefing yesterday that it needs to be a two foot, two foot takeoff and landing. They are very stringent on the movement standards to make sure that the sport's fair and accessible for everyone. They are, however, allowed to step up very much the same in CrossFit. If that is your background, the step up is fine as long as you take off two feet, land on two feet and put your hands down within a foot of your landing square. The field now very much joining Lauren, Meg and Vivian on the Burphy Broad jumps. This lovely wide angled shot showing your top six. Distance is always interesting in the jump as Megan Jacoby, done and dusted with the burpee broad jumps, transitions into her run. Let's go Jacoby. But yeah, the distance of the jumps, how do you keep your heart rate at a point that it isn't 
over compromise because it's such a gassy part of the workout to go run burpees run we were chatting about it with Chris Henshaw earlier you know keeping your heart rate at a level that's manageable is really important and if that's taking smaller jumps and that's what you should do even though it maybe requires more burpees and blows out your triceps a bit more I mean who needs triceps on a row right <laughs> Honestly, this is just a total assault on every single body part. And so much of it is mental. How deep into the pain cave can you go? So Lauren is now out of the burpee broad jump to 23 seconds behind Mega. So no real change in their times on that station. They both performed incredibly impressively. They both you know, kept moving, kept chipping away at it. They're going to be hurting on this run, though. There's Lauren on the screen there. She's looking like she's running very strong, as we often see with Lauren. Um, Twenty-two seconds between them. Look at Megan Jacoby there, just so comfortable. Obviously working as well with Rich Ryan, who we saw come in in fifth in the men's race. Rich Ryan specifically programming her running. Like, clearly those two have found a bit of a special ingredient, haven't they, working together with two real standout performances this weekend already? Yeah, both actually, like, two of the actual, if we were talking just pure running uh, abilities, two of the strongest runners in the field, actually. Um, and, you know, clearly they've been been having a good training block between them and Ryan Kent I know there's a lot of them that, that they, they train together quite often so they're all performing at the moment extremely well today now is that Megan coming in to the row yes yeah, so that's Megan on the row let's see how far Lauren Weeks is behind her So Lauren, the gap has opened up in that last run. The gap between Megan and Lauren has opened up by another few seconds. The 35 second difference between them coming into the row. Oh, the row. A time for one to collect themselves. Get your breathing back under wraps. Maybe shake out that muscle. Yeah, none of that happens. I'm totally lying. It's one of the worst periods because it really feels like you're at that halfway point, right? It's very much dawning on you that you still got three more rounds to go and so much more running. The interesting like, dynamic, if you like, on the row is that they're, they're, they're sitting next to each other so they can see what paces the other is running. Uh, like they, they can see what distance uh, is between them. And because it's a machine, because it shows you your pace, it gives you an in, it, it almost like it's feedback as to how you're feeling. Like you, you know you can go onto this machine fresh and pull a certain rate per 500 meters. If you're really struggling, then the machine will show you that and your paces will show you that. Um, so, you know, if Lauren, Lauren's gonna be conscious that she wants to claw back that 35 seconds somehow on Megan, she's gonna be having little glances to the side, seeing what Megan's screen is showing, seeing how far she is behind, seeing what pace she's uh, going, and then she's going to be tempted to try and push it, to try and top that pace. But will that push her over the edge and compromise her for the rest of it? So that looks like it's Vivian Tafuto running in to the rock zone. As we know, Megan Jacoby is well past the 300 meter mark, yes! And that's weeks as well past the 300 meter mark just under a third of the way through this workout on the rower as the rest of the field join them let's let them enjoy their row look at the bottom of this field the roll downs what excites me about this is that many of them are in their debut of the elite 15 but they all kind of, to a certain extent, came through together out of running in the pro race at World Championships in Manchester. So Maria Fessig, Zara Pirgiani, they were a part of a bit of a sprint finish to a certain extent. <laughs> but they're all, they feel like they're going on this journey together. Kate Davey was there as well. They're all on this journey together. 
how much does that almost take the pressure off of the, like this absolutely monumental moment in their career where they're suddenly on the world stage surrounded by your world record holders in Lauren Weeks and Meg Jacoby? It's, it's a fantastic experience of her. I mean, you're, you're right, it does feel like some of them are coming through it together. I, I know Kate and Zara are, are, are good friends, for example, but it, it, it helps to push each other on as well. You're, like, you're all chasing a very similar goal, the same goal, really, uh, and, and that, it, it, it pushes you on to be surrounded by people like that. Um, the, the experience today, you know, competing on the grid, competing against you know, some of the best athletes in the world, it's, it's a huge amount of experience that can be beneficial for you going forward. So even if they're not, you know, racing for the top three today necessarily, the experience that they gain can only benefit them in, in the future. Maria Fessick's uh, debut was in fact in Chicago in the pro as Megan is done and dusted on her rower. We need a nickname for her, like the Blonde Machine. <laughs> Super Flash. I'm not sure, I'm just making all sorts up now. Everyone's just laughing at me in the room. We need, to, we need to find her a superhero name. And Lauren Weeks, of course. Weeks and Jacoby on another whirlwind adventure in the High Rocks World Series. You're one and two at the moment. But look at that. I would say the gap is growing. As we see Lauren Weeks still on her rower. Not though looking fatigued in any way, but also not looking like she's panicking as she just finishes off her final couple of hundred meters. She's not particularly looking fatigued. That just leads me to think that Megan Jacoby is just on another level today. We'll try and get you the splits of the time difference between them all. 51 seconds now, Megan Jacoby on Lauren Weeks as Vivian Tafuto has passed the 900 meter mark. Only a couple more pulls for Vivian Tafuto, who's looking to have largely wrapped up this third place but Linda Mayer next to her on the row like we said growing through do not sleep on Linda Mayer who of these ladies are going to come off first look at the far right hand side of your screen and Viola Oberlander's interesting technique there to me Either she knows something that we don't on the rower or she's beginning to get tired. You can see her really utilizing her legs over her arms. That's the kind of thing I do when it's starting to get hard. <laughs> but Megan, look at her. The runaway train from the USA. Camila has unbroken wall balls in Manchester. So we know if she gets to that Warble station and say there's 20 seconds in it, she could climb that right back. I mean, every single drop for a Warble probably takes about three seconds if you take a break. You know, there's a good chance that that could take up four, four Warble shots and she could build that right back into it. She's, uh, she's had an injury-free off-season as, as well, which like always helps. This course, the, National, uh, the North American Championships course, was her Elite 15 debut a few years ago. So she's very confident here. I, uh, I had a really interesting conversation with her actually. She's uh, got a figure skating background and you go, okay, so maybe that doesn't exactly translate, but you've done some sport. But she had her first child at 21. She's now got three children. So she has been a mum and she's done like many years of her life just not doing any sort of training at all and then at one point she just went oh you know what I want to start training for something that was only 2.5 years ago you know mum of three started training for something and now she's comfortably you know in the top five of Hi High Rocks race it's, it's really impressive it's very impressive and I also, I also think when someone hasn't come from a, a background that they've been running at a higher level for all of their lives, I think that's exciting to see what the potential is as you go forward. You know, if someone really does focus on their running, even if it is like, you know, not, you know, when, when you're 15, 16, 17, 18 years old or something like that, it means that the, the, the improvements that you can make can be significant. 
Now, we've got Megan and Lauren both in on the farmer's carries here. Megan, uh, Lauren came in 54 seconds behind Megan there, so she's not closing that gap. I mean, no, not on the run, but you should have seen the pace that she took off when she picked up those two dumbbells. Dumbbells, those two kettlebells. But look, Megan Jacoby already gone. I don't think there's anything that Lauren Weeks is going to be able to do now to catch her. That's just, Megan is just on fire. It's too much of a gap. As Lauren tries to push and eke every ounce out of herself with those two 24 kilogram kettlebells. Another point to make here is that like the, the next station with the lunges is one where traditionally Megan has been stronger than Lauren. So if we look at Megan's world record pace, the lunges uh, were uh, a fairly incredible time there. When we saw Lauren earlier in the season racing Dubai, throughout the race I was following it and Lauren was consistently head at that world record pace until it got to the lunges and that's where she dropped the time so there's there's nothing to indicate at this stage that lauren's going to claw back time on lunges obviously we don't know how megan is feeling if she has gone out too hot and then just like the lunges you know kill her or the wall walls kill her and she can't do them unbroken like she typically can then that remains to be seen it's always possible uh, but for megan to have this lead at this stage of the race no when she knows deep down inside that she's very strong on these last two stations, uh, she's going to be feeling very good. But that's what's going to be so exciting for me when we start getting to these other major races, right? Those top five, because we've got rollbacks. Once Lauren and Meg have secured their tickets, we know they're racing at every single major race. So even if they are coming one and two at the majors, suddenly we've got three spots we can be talking about who are going to world champs in, you know, third, fourth and fifth, which gets super exciting with this middle group of athletes who right now are fighting for fifth and potentially a roll down based on the legacy invites but we're going to be having this conversation every time we go to a major like who's coming fourth and fifth suddenly we can talk about so many more people i don't know it just makes the sport the sport it's about the race within a race it's not just about who's leading and that is a really exciting place to be in especially when things are so tight in the middle of the table Megan Jacoby lunging her way to victory. I really hope I'm not doing the whole commentator's curse thing here. <laughs> but she's looking super confident. There is no middle steadying step that you can see when fatigue steps in. I mean, volunteers, the heart and soul of the High Rocks community, all decked out in our principal partner, Puma. I put on their trainers today and I told you tonight while we were walking over, I felt like I was walking on a cloud. I don't know, it's because I never wear runners. So it might, just, it might have been because I was wearing runners for the first time. But no, they are, they are very comfy indeed. Um, side note, a bird just flew in here. <laughs> Welcome to the commentary box here at the High Rocks uh, Open Major here in Chicago. The Lauren's into the so Lauren's just come into the Sam Meg lunges as well, but she's one minute 11 behind Megan at this point. And Megan doesn't look like she's slowing. She's just stepping through confidently there, looking really, really good. So I don't think the gap is going to... Uh, Lauren will really, really have to move here to close the gap. The gap. The gap's got bigger. It's improved. Uh, an extra nine seconds now. Jacoby has on weeks one minute 11 now like I honestly can't see where that's going to be made up no it's, it's very hard to see now if Megan was like poor at wall balls and we knew that Lauren can go unbroken then maybe we'd be saying yeah it, it can be done at the wall balls but Megan's fairly consistently recently done unbroken wall balls so it is hard to see where the gap can be made up should also mention the time that Megan's doing here since so she came into those sandbag lunges in just under 49 minutes. Um, that's like on for a very impressive time, potentially a sub 60 that I think we're going to see here from her. How exciting! Nothing gets you more fired up than a sub 60 in the female field. Absolutely love it. I mean, it just goes to show that the boundaries are being broken by the female athletes at the moment and especially 
I mean, as we've already established, I'm not a mum, but one day I hope to be. But to see it done by women who have children and who have lives and jobs, like that just gets me so excited as a female athlete in the space, albeit at the community level. It really is a sport for absolutely everyone. And watching the elites here today in their incredible athletic performance, you know, that's only the tip of the iceberg because you've got people using this to challenge themselves like day to day. I'm personally in my box, I've got six or seven members and we only operated around 80 members, you know, like all like signed up for their first ever high rocks race this year. Like that's how this is now kind of taking a bit of a foothold. These are people who only started CrossFit because we're very new, started CrossFit, you know, about a year ago. Um, and they are looking for ways to, you know, test themselves. And they're looking to High Rocks to do that, which is really, really cool. And we're all going to travel up to um, Glasgow and Berlin, I think, are our two that we're doing. You know, a little bit of a Welsh contingent. Let's go. <laughs> and these, just, just on that point about, you know, Megan being a mum and, and, and having a job and still operating at these levels. These elite athletes are huge inspirations to the rest of the community. We're going to see like 175,000 athletes in, in higher ups next year, 65 races. The sport is growing so much and these are at the, the top of that sport and they're an inspiration and it's easy to look at these people and say, oh, they're just professional athletes. They just train all day. Uh, they've got no other worries, nothing to worry about. But it's not like that at, at, at the moment in the sport. You know, eventually I think we'll see it professionalised. A bit, you know, sponsorship opportunities are open up. We've got the prize money, um, but right now it, it, it will always be an inspiration, really. But really, like, just going to that point about Megan, me and Mum, Lauren, me and Mum, a huge inspiration to to all the other athletes. The final steps for Lauren Weeks on the sandbag lunges, and she'll join Megan Jacoby on the final run. As Jacoby laps Carolina Silva from Portugal, our 15th ranked athlete out on the field, just goes to show how fast Jacoby has been out there. Absolutely incredible. One more step for weeks, and she is on to her final kilometer. But you sense the change in music, the tension builds as Megan Jacoby starts believing, starts thinking, starts imagining, starts knowing that this title could be hers. And the gaps opened just wildly. 141. Jacoby is taking this by storm. The crowd's certainly getting hyped here on Navy Pier in Festival Hall. As Megan Jacoby closes out her final kilometer. And sometimes, arguably, it's easier to chase than be chased. You know, she'll know what she needs to do. As Megan Jacoby reaches the wall balls. Six kilograms for the ladies. 100 war balls to a 2.7 meter target. No one is catching this woman. Lovely depth from the world record holder. 58-58, Megan Jacoby. She knows what's needed to go sub 60. She's done it before. And she might be on to do it again. Megan's looking incredibly strong there on the wall balls, but if we look at that, that, that chase for third spot with Vivian, Vivian is currently in, in third place, but Linda is closing the gap. And if we look at the most recent runs, on the on run seven alone, Linda clawed back 20 seconds on that run. The previous run, she clawed back 11 seconds. So she's going to be confident. Well, I think there's a, a, a 20 second gap going into that that final run. But Linda is, it will be feeling good on the runs and she's, she knows she's clawing back like 20 seconds per run. Uh, it could easily catch up at the wall balls and literally have a neck and neck, uh, having a wall ball off for a place at the World Championships. It must be a surreal experience being the only woman at the Warble station. She's out there completely isolated, but she's not dropping that ball. Megan Jacoby 
your leader. And look who joins her, it's Lauren Weeks, side by side. The two American greats in women's high rocks, fighting it out on the final station of this absolutely grueling race. There's little Weeks will be able to do now. Megan Jacoby, an unstoppable freight train ever since she left the station. In fact, actually, Jacoby played this so well because she didn't get sucked in in those opening exchanges through the run or the ski erg. She didn't necessarily bide her time, but like we mentioned, she certainly did run her own race. Yeah, yeah, she did. Like you say, Lauren opened up. A bit. It was only a very small gap, really, in those, in those early stages, but it, even, I think it was six seconds on the first run, for example. It's easy, six seconds over a kilometre can, can be a significant difference to how you feel for the rest of the race. So she trusted herself and she didn't get drawn into it. And, you know, clearly she's been strong throughout this race. And there she goes. Megan Jacoby, your 2024 major Chicago champion. What an unbelievable performance from the world's best. That was so unbelievably impressive. Oh, but the battle for third is on. Tafuto versus Maya. They reached the war balls, Greg, at exactly the same time. This is what racing's all about. This is what we want to see. This is exactly what we want to see. A space for the World Championships up for grabs at the Wall Balls coming in together. Who's going to break first? You're next to each other. You know how good you're feeling. This is where you really need to dig deep. High Rocks is about digging deep. It's a mental game at this point. You know, they both can do these wall balls. They've both done them a thousand times before. But how big are you willing to dig deep for that, for that place at the World Championships? And look, these girls are digging deep. I've not seen Weeks rest once. And so far, nor Maya or Tafuto. So much riding. A ticket to the World Championships in Nice in June. Do it now and your entire season can be based around performing at that one race. I mean, you can go to the majors, there's prize money up for grabs, but what a weight off your shoulders if you know that you are sorted for the big one of the season. You're right, that's an absolutely huge advantage to know that you need to peak for a race in June and not have to race and not have to get a time and not have to compete in the majors, not have to podium for the rest of the season. Camila Massa and Beck Mason came in neck and neck, but that is Lauren Weeks, your runner up here in Chicago. Always so impressive watching these two women do their thing. It's never not a battle between two of the best in the sport. We've not seen Vivian or Linda break yet. Who's going to be the first to break? And maybe it'll be neither of them, in which case it comes down to how quickly they're scoring, how quickly they're throwing the ball, how quickly they can, can they cycle it. You know, sometimes it's, that's literally what it comes down to at this level, when they can all go unbroken. It's, it's, yeah, it's incredible to see. I mean, just visually, I would say Vivian Tafuto has the edge there. She's just got a slightly quicker cycle speed and she's not holding out in the bottom at all. You can see Maya is really driving with her legs though. That certainly helps with height. It minimizes the risk of no reps. I mean, I'm just, I'm double guessing myself here. It really could be anyone's. So that's kind of the beauty of it. You see Massa there opting for a slightly wider foot stance. That's interesting because it doesn't quite allow the depth of the other girls. That could catch her out. You're right, she's, she's moving quickly, but I think if we, we were just talking about cycle speed there, I think Linda's edging it right now. Oh, and Vivian's broken, Vivian's broken. That's going to encourage Linda. Look, Linda's still going, still going. And she's going to know that she's, she's got it now. She's got the edge. If she can just keep going, keep moving, she's got a spot at the World Championships. The smile that you just saw on Linda Meyer's face there. And it's Linda Meyer! Get 
a ticket to Worlds. Third place for the German. I'm not sure we saw that coming. She built through the entire race, quite literally. At one point, I think she was in eighth and she has just chipped away periodically over the last hour and look at where it's got her. A bronze medal here in Chicago as Tafuto also crashes over. An absolutely admirable effort and we, we know how brutal it is to be caught on the final station. It honestly, is, it's so not easy. She's done such a fabulous job across the race. She held third for the majority. But these girls, you know, they're impressive. They're athletes. They know how to win. Yeah, they are. We, we talk so much, you know, today just purely about pacing your higher ups. I think if we look at Linda, I think she's extracted every last bit of potential from herself today. She has paced that to perfection. We saw the split times dropping. We saw the gap dropping between her and Vivian. She was reeling her in all the time. And there goes Camilla crossing the line in fifth spot. Really impressive performance from Camilla uh, in a time of... We're not sure yet. How good is your eyesight, Greg? Because that's a very small screen. <laughs> no, very impressive. Still, five athletes on the Warble station as the sixth joins them. We've got Viola Oberlander. Alina Vilnau. Viola Oberlander, she is in. A big race for Oberlander. She occupied third for a short amount of time and that is a great result for Alina Vilnau. Absolutely awesome. For someone who's still so new to racing, her second season upcoming and closing out this in the top six. Tara Jackson, a DECA world record holder. She closes out her race. I'm not gonna lie, I'm not even sure she looks particularly tired. It's a uh, a huge amount of work over a very short space of time. And you look at these ladies, and I mean, I don't sure we say they make it look easy, but if the average person tried to race at the pace that we've just witnessed, you know, the likelihood is you would implode. Yeah, it's... Uh like we keep saying, you have to dig very deep in a higher ops and then, and then you have to finish off with 100 ball balls. It's incredibly tough and they're just chipping away at it, looking very, very strong still. Um, I think this is Zara uh, Piergiani, uh, Kate Davy and Maria Fessick I think we're looking at here. Uh, all looking really good. Uh, and there goes Zara crossing the line there. So to, to, to reiterate, we, we, the top three finishers today have qualified for the World Championships. What's more, the top finisher has qualified themselves for all the majors next year. And the top three have also qualified themselves for the reigning majors this year. Let's take a little reminder of who has now qualified. Ryan Kent, the winner here in Chicago in the men's race. Rylan Shadeg in second and Alexander Ronchevich. Those are your three with tickets to the World Champs in Nice in June. And of course, all remaining major races for the season. Pending, of course, them accepting their invites, but really, really exciting to see a rookie amongst those names. Of course, we know what Ryan Kent can do. We know what Alex Ronchevich can do, but oh my God, Rylan Shadeg. That is so exciting for the sport, having someone youthful, exciting, and able to hang with the big boys coming straight in. Yeah, and someone that it doesn't feel, at least to me, like he's he's focused on the high rocks until, and there's Kate Davy crossing the line there. It's Kate's first appearance on the grid, 
really impressive performance, a huge amount of game from this experience. Um, but yeah, going back to going back to Ryland, like, like I said, it, it doesn't feel like he, he's been trying to peak for this race or the race that qualified him for it. If he does choose to focus on it now, um, it's, his potential is, is it could be it could be really good to see. Ryland does what he wants. Ryland wanted to be in Greece last week, doing well at Trifecta, which he did. He came second. He then fancied a little trip to Istanbul. He then fancied a trip to Switzerland. And now he's here taking his ticket at World Champs. Utterly amazing. Daniela Couto there finishing off her war balls. The Portuguese late call up. But the women who we will see in France. Megan Jacoby, Lauren Weeks, and Linda Meyer. This is so exciting. We already know that should they qualified, Megan and Lauren were both going to be racing every single major this season, but now the opportunity exists for Linda Meyer as well. As the last of the field chip away at the final wall balls. Alandra Greenlee just behind Daniela Couto there. That's not something we expected, Greg, but you know, like we said at the start of the show, she's a full-time doctor. Her priorities maybe aren't always going to be racing. Great to see her out there and getting it all completed alongside young rookie from Portugal. And the cheer crew is out in force. That's what you need at these moments, isn't it? A big group of girls standing around you saying, you do not put that wall down. So let's take a look at the results. Jacoby, of course, your champion from here in Chicago. But Camila Massa finishing at top five and Vivian Tafuto fourth. So much to look forward to from this middle of the pack. Rebecca Mason equals her result from World Championships. I mean, that's a nice uh, looking leaderboard of ladies as we get ready for Stockholm, Greg. The season is underway. The season is well underway. We've seen two fantastic races, incredible performances from athletes this early in the season. Now they've qualified for the, for the World Championship, but I know many of them are expecting to perform in the remaining majors of the season. It, it, you know, we talk about Megan and, and, and Lauren a lot today. It's, it's very little separated them today. It would be very hard to call for future races uh, if anything's going to separate them. Um, so yeah, fantastic opening races of the season. So after a six month hiatus since the 23 World Championships, the Elite 15 season is very much back in business. Whilst local triumphs obviously will continue this afternoon here on Navy Pier in the community racing, our gaze now turns to the global stage. Six tickets to Worlds have been secured and they've set the tone for a grand spectacle in June. But the journey doesn't end here. Three more majors on the horizon, two last chance qualifiers away. So, we'll see you in Stockholm. From Greg Williams, myself, huge congratulations to all of the athletes and everyone who has booked their ticket to Nice. Goodbye, but only for a little bit.